Hello, this lecture coincides with the OpenGeology.org textbook created by authors at the Salt Lake Community College, including myself. Uh, this lecture is covering silicates and how minerals are classified. There are well over 4,000 different named minerals that uh, mineralogists have discovered so far. And uh, fewer than 100 of these are make up most of the rocks on the planet. So a lot of the minerals beyond that 100 are kind of special cases. Most of the continental crust is made up of just eight different types of atoms, types of elements. And uh, these most of the, those, 46% by weight is oxygen. And um, a, Another almost third is silicon. So silicon and oxygen are extremely abundant. And because of that, we separate minerals, classify minerals into two major groups. So today we're gonna to talk about the silicates, which contain silica, combination of one silica atom or oxygen atoms to make what is known as a silica tetrahedra. These account for more than 90% of Earth's crust. There are also non-silicates, which I will devote another lecture to, and we order these by the um, type of chemicals, type of elements in those. They're not as common as the silicates, but they're still definitely economically important. So the two major groups, a lot of people like to organize silicates by light silicates and dark silicates, and this coincides with the continental crust which is more felsic in nature. That's an igneous rock compositional term. And, and uh, the dark silicates coincide with the mafic uh, oceanic crust. Light silicates, like the continental crust, are generally light in weight in specific gravity and light in color. And they contain uh, things like aluminum, potassium, calcium, and sodium, and relatively more um, silicate silica material. Uh, and examples of minerals that are considered light silicates are quartz, potassium feldspar, which is pictured in this slide, uh, muscovite, a sheet-like uh, semi-transparent mineral, and a lot of clays, kaolinite, and things like that. Dark silicates are mafic, beautiful dark minerals, iron and magnesium rich, relatively less silica than the light silicates. Uh, of course, they're silicates, so they still contain silica. They are denser, heavier, and some prime examples include the uh, beautiful green olivine, uh, pyroxene, and amphibole. And there's some augite and biotite presented. I'll show you some examples of those dark silicates. All silica, silicate minerals contain silica and oxygen. And there's a silica tetrahedra for you. It looks kind of like a pyramid where you have uh, nicely arranged oxygen atoms around a silica atom, four charged oxygen atoms surrounding a silica atom. And you can polymerize, link together polymer. The, the, what I think of when I hear polymerization is I think of Plastics, they're polymers. And they're polymers because they have long strings of, of carbons chained together. And this is a very similar idea. You have long strings of these silica tetrahedra. You can make very complicated and interesting structures based on how these silica tetrahedra are arranged. arranged. And this is how uh, we organize a lot of the silicates. Other than splitting them into light versus dark, you can, you can organize them based on how the silica tetrahedra uh, are arranged. The simplest situation being the nesosilicates, which are on their own. The soro, soro, you know, I, th I think that's a Greek root for sister, where you have two kind of conjoined uh, silicate tetrahedra. And you can get into more complex structures like uh, chains and double chains, and these can create things like uh, the asbestos can. Uh, type minerals that have these stringy strands. And you can start to see how 
the atomic scale arrangement of silica tetrahedra lead to uh, the properties of the mineral. You get into these phyllosilicates, which are sheet-like phyllo, I think is a Greek root for, uh, for a leaf. And you can get these amazing sheet-like silicates, the micas, the books of uh, single cleavage where they split into thin sheets like a uh, lipidolite or muscovite or biotite and cyclosilicates, which are ring-like structures. So all of these are examples of polymerization, silicate minerals, and the different arrangements of these, these silica tetrahedrons will create for very different properties, especially how the minerals break and cleave and split into smaller pieces. Uh, and then, you know, the strongest and the most orderly arrangement kind of meta to play a YouTube video in a YouTube video, but uh, here is uh, the structure of silica of, of quartz. Uh, and this is a framework silicate, and you can see a kind of a three-dimensional framework of these silica structures. And oftentimes you can have ions, charged atoms, connecting these silicate structures, these arrangements of silica tetrahedrons, uh, where you have these charged ions between your sheets or between your rings or within your rings. Uh, so keep that in mind, and that's part of what can make up the, the chemical composition of these silicates. And that's it for the, uh, the silicates. Uh, please continue watching for the non-silicates, and I hope you learned a little bit about